Okay, welcome back. DJ Vic Faber with you. Phase four, Bitwig Studio. Going through some phase four, uh, kind of for beginners, phase four uh, basics. So we talked in the introduction about what phase distortion is. But uh, before we continue on with any kind of sound design or any further uh, in-depth look at the phase four, let's also combine our understanding of phase distortion with phase modulation, slightly different uh, concept, but still important to explore. And I'll, again, try my best to explain it in a way that I think can help uh, educate you. So phase modulation, you got to think of modulation itself as something that's cycle driven or, you know, runs in cycles where, you know, just goes over and over and over and repeats itself. So uh, modulation is simply, you know, manipulating a start point and, and continuing that cycle over and over. You know, you, you probably heard of people or you probably used yourself an LFO, a low frequency oscillator, where that's going to manipulate, you know, and modulate a parameter to uh, affect the sound. So we're going to look again, focus on the red on uh, oscillator one here. And we're also gonna work a little bit in uh, on the blue. So we focused on these two right now um, to get a good idea what phase modulation is. So right now we've got in, in the oscillator one in the red, we've got the, um, the shape knob that we worked with in the previous uh, introduction video. And then we've got our modulation knob and then you've got four smaller ones right here, and they're all color coded according to each color of each oscillator within the phase four. And when, then we've got a speaker, an overall speaker volume here, which is turned all the way up on the red. Now on the blue, all these features are identical. We've got the shape, the mod, and the four little guys here. But on this one, we've got the speaker turned all the way down. Now it's still gonna function for us. We're just not gonna audibly hear the output. But what we can do is whatever waveform we've got here, which is a sine, of course, we can use that as a source to modulate um, our oscillator one. So essentially we're gonna use it you know, as, a, as an oscillator or a modulator in this case um, with no output but affecting here. So how do we do that? Well, we just grab, you know, the little knob that's color coded for that particular one that we want to use. In this case, it's the second one here. And like I said, each one is color coded. We can even use, if we wanted to, we can use the red one so you can have the oscillator, you know, modulate itself. But in this case, we're going to talk about the blue one. So let me make a note here. Oh, sorry. Bear with me just a second here. Push the wrong button. Hate when that happens. All right. Got about all these shortcuts in here. All right, back in business. So let's take this um, blue and let's modulate over here. Now, right now, we're not hearing anything. Even though I've got it turned up a little bit, you know, we're not seeing anything, we're not hearing anything. But if I move my mod knob, the big mod knob here, not only do you see in in the red uh, waveform, uh, you know, oscillator display up here, not only do you visually see the changes that are being introduced by this one, but you can hear the changes sonically. So what's happening there? So we're sending over this information, this sine wave, sending it over to here by dialing this in at this amount. And then we're bringing it in with our mod knob to manipulate the beginning of this uh, cycle. So that is phase modulation. But um, currently what we're, we're doing it at such a high rate that we're really not seeing it, you know, in good detail. Because if you look at what's going on, we'll talk about ratio a little bit later, but if you look at what's going on over here, 
the cycle the cycle of this particular sine wave in in the blue is going so fast so what we want to do is slow it down and i can slow it down see you can watch the blue now you can see it start to slow down by introducing a higher number on the ratio here now we're getting it to a very slow point we'll get it real slow and now that speed is going to be our modulation source over here once I turn this mod knob up. And now you get a better visual of what we're actually accomplishing. So if you see this red sine wave now, see how it's moving left to right with the same rate that we've set over here and we've set the rate by using the ratio. And it'll get a little bit faster and faster simply by you know, dialing in the amount of modulation that we want with our mod knob. Visually, I hope that that's going to give you guys a really good understanding of what we're trying to accomplish as far as considering what phase modulation is. That's that's ba the very basics of what we're doing here within the phase four is we're using the other oscillators maybe in combination with each other or maybe individually or maybe themselves to create this movement within our waveform. And obviously that movement is going to translate to pitch or timbre at some point just due to the speed of the way things are um, oscillated. So, And then, of course, if we go back down with the ratio, it's going to get faster and faster and you won't, you'll see this kind of disappear. It'll just look like it's standing still. See, now they both look like they're standing still, but they're actually cycling through at a very, very fast rate. So that was an easy way to show you and help you understand the actual concept of taking one of the other oscillators here and dialing it, choosing its uh, corresponding parameter and dialing it in. But nothing's going to happen just by turning it up. Always remember that you need to introduce the modulation here. Now, these are individual modulation uh, parameters, the big white guy right here in the center of each of these. But over here, if you take a look to the left, these are actually global controls. This is a global shape control and a global modulation control, as well as the glide and the pitch. That'll These controls control all four of these at once. So essentially, if I had this turned down, in theory, see now nothing's happening when I go to modulate. Even though the blue is turned up and I'm turning up the modulation, nothing's happening. It's because we've taken the global modulation source and turned it down. Now we can get our modulation going again. So if you're ever trying to wonder why something doesn't seem like the modulation's affecting it properly, Maybe give yourself a quick visual reference over here and make sure that you haven't got the global modulation or the global shape knobs turned all the way down. I think in default, when phase four opens with inside of Bitwig, these are already turned up for you. But just as you get a little bit more experimental with your sound, de sound design, keep an eye on that. So, all right, we'll go ahead and move on to the next uh, video or next tutorial and talk a little bit more about the phase four. I just wanted to give you guys a, a good visual concept of what's happening from one oscillator to the next and how they're affecting each other in a very simple and easy way to understand. So, all right, let's move on to our next tutorial.